provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, the Board Secretary has forwarded notice of this meeting for advertising by having the date, time, and place thereof posted in the Secaucus Town Hall on the Bulletin Board of Education Administration Building, as well as notice being provided to the Bergen Record, Jersey Journal, and District website. Mr. Bartletta? Present. Mr. Bolognino? Present. Ms. Callie? Present. Ms. Eccles? Here. Mr. Lewis? Present. Mr. Mixto? Here. Mr. Patel? Here. Dr. Strober? Here. Okay, I need a motion for approval of the minutes. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Mixto? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Organization reports? Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. Good evening. I'm Rob Valenti, principal of Huber Street School. On Wednesday, September 8th, we welcomed full classes into Huber Street School for the first time in 544 days. It was amazing to watch the children come back to school. Thank you to our teachers for decorating hallways and classrooms and making them inviting places to learn and grow. Thank you to Dr. Kaiser, Matt Miller, Devin Paredes, and AJ Tobia for making sure that the technology in every room was up and running for day one. Thank you to Kim Pascarello and Colleen Mason for pretty much everything they do. A huge debt of thanks is owed to Enzo Castelli, Bill Heaney, Ed Sinisi, and the rest of their team for having the schools ready for the opening of school after having summer programs in the school, but then a torrential amount of rainfall shortly before the school year started. Uh, next Thursday, we honor our retired teachers at a belated retirement dinner. Uber Street School lost Claire Costello, Judy Jager, Faith Rennie, Anna Critelli, and Liz Paredes, who combined for over a century's worth of experience. And while they leave behind some pretty big shoes to fill, we've added some, some great teachers to our team this year. I want to welcome Tara Mild, Carrie Martin, Ashley Cho, Melanie Marin, Lisa Castronovo, and crossing Patterson Plank Road to join us from Clarendon School, Michelle Palmer and Lucy Beagler. This coming Tuesday, Uber Street School will be hosting Back to School Night at 6 o'clock p.m. And on Monday, September 27th, Uber Street School and Clarendon School will be assessing our fourth and fifth grade students with the Start Strong assessment. We are also proud to announce that a team from Learn to Dance will be instructing our second graders this year, and that Core Yoga for Youth will be giving yoga lessons to all students K through five. Thank you, have a great night, and to those celebrating Yom Kippur, I hope that you had an easy fast. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Good evening, Dr. Danielle Garzon, Principal of Clarendon School. Welcome to a new school year. To welcome back our bees to the hive, students and their families enjoyed viewing sidewalk chalk messages from the staff, welcome back signs, and walking through a balloon arch as they entered our school filled with smiles, laughter, and happiness. We looked forward to meeting every single one of our students and made sure their first experience back to school is one to always remember. Each year brings positive change, and we are excited to welcome the new additions to our faculty. Welcome to Ashley Vidiello, Nicole Charles, Elizabeth Matos, 
Jordan Irizarry, and Chrysalay Lokiel. On September 8th, the Claret and Bees walked into the building, some for the first time since March of 2020. It is great to have the building buzzing again with energy and learning. <laughs> Throughout the past week and a half of school, teachers not only worked with students on procedures and routines, but integrating mindfulness and wellness into their daily routine. On Tuesday, September 14, several classes participated in a yoga session with Bobby Joe from the Core Yoga Youth Program. Students practiced different stretches and put their mind at ease using various yoga poses. Our theme for this year is every storm is followed by a rainbow, which is part of our social emotional growth mindset. Promoting mindfulness and SEL in our schools allows students to be aware of the present moment. Utilizing daily mindful moments to enhance our growth mindset continues to demonstrate our goal. We have a few upcoming events, such as our kindergarten to fifth grade back to school night, which will be held on Monday, September 20th at 6 p.m. Our PTA hosted back to school bash will be taking place on Thursday, September 30th by the Clarendon baseball field. I'd like to close by thanking all of my staff for all of their hard work and continued dedication. They are a true inspiration. I couldn't ask for a better group of people to work with. They have been incredible in helping to get our school off to a great start. Always know that I appreciate you. A special shout out to Dr. Kaiser, Matt Miller, Devin Paredes, Sal Chaffee, all of our custodial staff, staff volunteers, Colleen Santaniello, Erica DeMays, and Sharon Voley for the incredible job they do each and every day to make our day a smoother one. Thank you to Al Martini and former students from Secaucus High School who painted our school this summer. You did an amazing job. Thank you to our PTA for the first day of school, coffee and sweets for our families and who have been an integral part in organizing many of our school events. And finally, to our amazing families. Thank you for your patience, flexibility, support, and cooperation. With the world changing quickly in front of our eyes, I look forward to a wonderful year because I know we are here to support one another. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> good evening, Christine Candela, Principal of Secaucus Middle School. On behalf of everyone at the middle school, let me say that we are thrilled to be back in person and so grateful to our secretarial, custodial, and IT staff for making sure everything was perfect for our first day. It's as if we barely skipped a beat. This week, handing out locks was the hot topic, and it's so nice to see our students back and excited over changing classes, setting up their lockers, and meeting new people. Over the summer, we welcomed families and students who had never been to the building as both incoming sixth graders and returning seventh graders. I cannot thank our Patriot Ambassadors enough for all their hard work throughout the summer. Under the guidance of Ms. Boxen and Ms. Cicillo, these students provided tours for families, helped students navigate the first three days of school last week, and even attended back to school night to make sure all our attendees could follow their child's schedule and visit all the different teachers and classrooms. We are excited about the new additions to our faculty. Mrs. Karen Rondi has joined our staff from the high school. Mr. Steven Zara and Mrs. Deborah Acevedo have joined our history department. Ms. Nayakayu Kairu is our new member of the science department, and Ms. Christina Fuentes will be joining our math department. This week we had middle school soccer tryouts, and tomorrow we have our activity fair in Ritberg Hall. Veteran members of our clubs will be decorating tables and proudly representing each activity. Our sixth graders and new students are looking forward to joining and attending the meetings and events happening later this month. On Monday and Tuesday of next week, students in grades six to eight will be taking the NJ Start Strong assessments for ELA, math, and science. Our PTO is holding their first fundraiser selling mums, so please check out our school website and Facebook page to support their efforts and our students. The deadline to order is September 20th, and the pickup will be on September 24th. They will also be hosting a block party for our students early in October. Thank you, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Steve Vigiani, principal of Secaucus High School. On September 8th, we welcomed uh, our entire student body back uh, to school. This is the first time in 18 months that we had our, all of our students and staff uh, in the building for a full day. 
um, our SGO uh, advisors, Ms. Kim and Mr. Caruso, spent the evening uh, with their students, spent the evening preparing uh, the entrance with balloons, posters, and music. It was a great way uh, to start this much anticipated school year. We held our third COVID-19 vaccination clinic at the high school and middle school on Friday, uh, September 10th. This was another opportunity for students and even some staff members uh, to receive the Pfizer vaccine. As always, it was a great pleasure to work with uh, Mr. Gary Jeffess and the Secaucus vaccination team and our local health department. Special thank you again to Mr. Uh, to Councilman uh, John Gervasio for administering the shots. On Tuesday, September 14th, uh, that was our picture day for freshmen, uh, sophomores, and juniors with no pictures last year, and how quickly um, our high school students mature. You can only imagine how, a, how out, outdated their records are. Um, and seniors are in the process of taking their portraits. Secaucus High School Back to School Night was held uh, last night. Um, this was an in-person event. It was wonderful to see our parent community once again. They expressed their excitement that uh, schools are open um, for full day instruction and the overall evening was successful. As always, our teachers did a wonderful job welcoming our parents and describing the course and classroom expectations. Our PTSA executive board were signing up members along with our athletic club, and we had several Honor Society students volunteer um, their time to help parents navigate the building and find rooms, and uh, they are always a great uh, representation of our school. The class of 2022 Tricky Tray uh, will, be, uh, will be holding a, a Tricky Tray event on uh, Sunday, uh, September 19th. Uh, this will uh, be held outside on the tennis courts for the first time. Uh, if uh, anyone would like to purchase tickets, um, they can contact Mr. Cassess or Ms. Uh, Duca at Secaucus High School. There is a rain date, um, but I don't think, according to the weather, it looks like Saturday is going to be, uh, Sunday is going to be, be a beautiful day. Um, but the rain date is uh, September 26th. On Tuesday, September 21st, Sea Caucus High School will be holding a virtual financial aid night for all parents. This presentation will provide valuable information about filling out the, va the FAFSA form. Uh, the FAFSA stands for uh, Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Um, if parents or students are unable uh, to attend this virtual live presentation, the PowerPoint will be posted on the Sea Caucus High School website. And on September 21st, uh, 20th and 21st, Seacox High School will be administering the Start Strong Assessment. Um, this assessment will take place during the school day. It's, it is intended uh, to produce information uh, that will be uh, used as a standard-based um, complement to the resources that teachers already use in their classrooms. Class of 2023, um, We'll be holding a parent and guardian meeting on September 27th, and that begins at 7 o'clock in the Secaucus High School Dining Hall. And we will be holding a, an activity fair for our students on September 21st and 22nd. Um, this uh, will provide students an opportunity uh, to sign up for clubs and other activities that are offered um, at our high school. And the class of 2022 will be having their senior breakfast on Friday, September 23rd. Fourth, um, this breakfast will be set up outside. I do want to thank our custodians. As you can imagine, uh, they do a tremendous amount of work, uh, especially this year, lugging tables and chairs in and out as we need. Um, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good evening. I am honored and humbled to be here serving the role as acting superintendent. We have been working diligently over the past few months with the district administration to open our schools for the first full days in over 18 months. We welcomed all students back into the district on September 8th. And there were many smiling faces to be seen. I want to thank all of our integral staff in the district for playing a part in making that happen. There are a few first day wrinkles, but all was ironed out by the second day. Our first lunch period in 18 months proved to be a success in all our school buildings. I had the chance to visit every school building this week to observe the social distancing procedures put in place by the building principals and our supervisor of buildings and grounds, Mr. Sal Chaffee. Lunch at Clarendon School has been transitioned to the gymnasium, giving students the much needed space required for a safe, unmasked lunch period. Through alerts to the topics posted on social media, 
and some direct sources, the administration, Ms. Yeo, and I have been made aware of your concerns regarding the choices available to your children for lunch. I want to elaborate on that for one moment. Sea Caucus participates in the seamless summer option offered by the state of New Jersey to provide all students in the district with free lunch for the 2021-22 school year. This is a program we participated in last school year also. We did not have full school days and the breakfasts and lunches were picked up periodically by parents. Currently, because of this free program, our lunch demands in each school have nearly doubled. Like many other shortages we have in district right now and through no fault of their own, Masio's food service is understaffed in dealing with the preparation of a number of lunches that are being distributed. So advanced preparation is required for the lunches, which is much easier to do with a cold lunch option. For the record, at least three cold lunch options are being provided to students in each school building. Hot food to serve almost 1,200 students a day also poses the problem of food storage. In order to meet these increased lunch demands, our current cold storage facilities on our campuses are already packed. Hot food would also add to these storage problems and also require the addition of food warmers in multiple locations throughout all of the school buildings. Additional cold storage is currently back ordered and not immediately available for us to attempt to expand our menus. However, despite these issues we're facing, we hear you. Yesterday, our district administration met with personnel from Mastio's to discuss the addition of hot food to our lunch options in the upcoming weeks. We will begin serving hot pizzas in each cafeteria starting Friday, September 23rd. More hot options will be added in upcoming weeks as we continue to work toward a permanent solution to this issue. Lastly, as I do my very best to fulfill the duties of this role, I want to make it a top priority to strengthen the partnership between the community and the schools. That begins with open lines of communication. The administration would like to offer an opportunity for you to voice your concerns to us. Tomorrow, every family in the district will receive a Google form that will allow you to ask questions and bring issues to our attention. It will also be available on our website at sboe.org. This form will be open for you to access through the next two weeks. Once we have received these comments, we will be meeting as an administrative team to compile a list of answers and do our very best to uh, offer clarification and feasible solutions to all of you. We will also continue to offer many opportunities throughout the school year to have your voices heard. Thank you. Oh, uh, no HIBs this month. Okay, uh, as you see on the screen, I, I guess it's a little small to see, so I'm gonna read it to you, okay? For the 2021 school year, okay, there are four incidents, one for each school. Um, let's see, we have uh, three confirmed HIBs at Sea Caucus High School, Clarendon School, and Huber Street School. And then there is a uh, substance uh, report at Sea Caucus Middle School, uh, there were 11 HIB uh, that were alleged, but only, only three were confirmed. Sorry, we are, we are required to report uh, twice a year uh, the school safety data system, uh, the, all of the incidents that occurred in our buildings. <laughs> Motion. Second. Yes. Mr. Bolognino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Hello again. 
Hello again. Um, standardized testing looked a little different last year than it has in the previous years. Um, we had actually had a postponement of the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment uh, that is given on a, on a yearly basis uh, due to the pandemic. Um, so the only thing that was tested was the access for ELLs, which is uh, uh, basically a summative assessment for our English language learners. And the dynamic learning maps were, were also um, administered last year, which is for um, cognitive, cognitively impaired students um, in lieu of the New Jersey Learning Assessment. Results from the access from ELLs must be reported this year because we had a, a number that was higher uh, than 10. So every time a, higher is, a number is higher than a certain amount, we are required to report the results to you. So um, I just wanted to say something really quickly. Uh, because the NJSLA, the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment, was postponed, as you heard from the principals, we are doing our Start Strong assessments. And they are basically a snapshot of ELA, mathematics, and science, and um, basically just to get us really good data points to use going forward to see where our uh, strengths and weaknesses lie. So access for ELLs, as I said, uh, the test provides information about students' English, English language abilities in school. And educators can use this as one of their uh, data points for uh, exiting a student from ESL instruction. Um, uh, right now, the uh, state requires multiple data points aside from the uh, access from ELL's uh, scores over a 4.5 to, to exit students from uh, English uh, language learning. Students do not need to study for the test. It kind of is a snapshot of, of how they are doing and how they um, basically demonstrate their language abilities. So here's a little report. Uh, this is Clarendon School, as you can see from little b on the side. This is Clarendon School. Um, we had kindergarten, and this is the cumulative test, uh, uh, cumulative tests from each grade level that tested. Um, again, a 4.5 is considered an exiting score, so a majority of these students, uh, because they did not reach that, remained in the ESL program. Huber Street School, um, here are the testing results from Huber Street School. I believe uh, some of the students in grade four did exit as a, a condition of their performance on this test and, and a few other factors. Secaucus Middle School. Um, again, uh, a lot of these students remained or kind of graduated into the, uh, the high school to continue their ELL instruction. Excuse me. I'll go back to that. Sorry. And Secaucus High School. Okay. Um, we had a few, a few students exit using this and, again, a lot of other uh, uh, factors in order to exit the ESL instruction from grade 9. Um, all of our district, district testing reports are available on sbue.org uh, under presentations, under board presentations. Okay. And that is our testing report for this year. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. McStow. I would like to thank Mr. Chaffee and our entire custodial staff and Ms. Leanne Nikolic for all their hard work in having our schools ready and opening in spite of our torrential rainstorm. They did an awesome job. Also, I would like to thank Ms. Debbie Zapolich, supervisor of our transportation, for working her magic and making sure all of our students that needed busing busing were provided with it. This is unprecedented times right now for bus drivers, so I do appreciate all the hard work that Ms. Appledge did in making sure our ch children were transported. Also, I'd like to thank our central office staff for their continuous hard work and dedication to our district. Tonight, I we will also be adding two additional resolutions under governance. Resolution R1.34, which reads, be it resolved that the Secaucus Board of Education, referred to as the board, appoints Dr. Daniela Reiser 
as the acting superintendent of schools for the school for the Seacock School District effective on September 8th, 2021 and expiring in accordance with the terms of the employment agreement between the board and riser on or about December 8th, 2021. Be it further resolved that the employment agreement shall be submitted to the interim executive county superintendent for review and approval according to the standards adopted by the commissioner of education. We will also be adding resolution R 1.35, which reads, be it resolved that the Secaucus Board of Education appoints Stephen Mistivigiani as the acting director of special services at a monthly prorated stipend of 3,000 until further action by the board. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to accept the recommendation of the acting superintendent to approve and adopt resolutions R1.01 through R1.35 and motion M1.01 as described below for the following. Mr. Bartletta. Yes, uh, abstain from R1.34 and R1.35. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Calley? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strobert? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to accept the recommendation of the acting superintendent to approve and adopt resolutions R2.01 as described below for the following. Second. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Calley? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. I would like to accept the recommendation of the acting superintendent to approve and adopt resolutions R5.01 through R5.03 as described below for the following. Second. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Calley? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Athletics, none. School technology, none. Operations, finance. I would like to accept the recommendation of the business administrator Board Secretary to approve and adopt resolutions R8.01 through R8.10 as described below. Second. Discussion. Here none. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Calley? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Safety, security, buildings, and grounds. I like to accept the, uh, I would like to accept the recommendation of the Business Administrator, Board Secretary, to approve and adopt Resolution 9.01, as described below. Second. Discussion. Here are none. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Calley? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Technology none. Public forum. Good evening. I'm Stephen Fogarty. I'm the attorney for the school district. This is the public forum. This meeting is open to the public for the purpose of addressing any subject matter 
that is pertinent to and or directly related to the operation of the Secaucus Public School District. Residents wishing to speak on such items must sign the register provided for this purpose and are required to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. The board may or may not respond to issues raised by members of the public at the time they are raised, but will provide a response if and when appropriate. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking. Please note that the board will not respond to comments regarding students or board employees in light of the privacy rights held by those individuals. Moreover, the board discourages comments about such individuals and will not be responsible for those comments. Members of the public are to, uh, who choose to speak during this public session should carefully consider their comments since they could be held personally liable for any statements they make. Finally, please note that in accordance with district policy number 1100, the board will not officially comment or respond to any matter mentioned unless it can confirm that the matter has first been brought to the attention of the appropriate school personnel. Thank you very much. Ruby Kish. Good evening. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Ruby Kish, 41 Creekside Court. So I want to start by thanking the teachers, staff, and administrators for successfully transitioning our students back to full day of school. Um, I know I speak on behalf of many parents when I say we have waited a long time for this week, and we are so excited that our children are back in the school building where they belong. So for the past year, my good friend, Natalie Brown, has stood before you and respectfully requested increased parental engagement and communication. And just last week, another parent, Carrie Chan, made a similar request. So I stand before you in solidarity with these two remarkable parent advocates to repeat the request for increased community engagement and also to emphasize the importance of effective communication and provide you with an example of what happens when that communication breaks down. This past Monday, our students began their first full day of school with expectations that the lunch period would be a little different. However, they expected that change to be manageable. What they encountered and what they were not prepared for was the meager choices that were offered to them and the absence of a hot lunch choice. As a result, many students spent their first afternoon of their first full day of school hungry. Monday's lunch confusion presents two issues. The first is that the district failed to prepare for the return of students to a full day of school. And the second, the most important issue, is the district failed to effectively communicate with parents. Regarding the first issue, the roadback plan released on August 20th indicated that both hot and cold lunch options would be available. I cannot understand why hot lunches were not made available from the beginning of the school year. Uh, my understanding is the decision was made that cold lunches would be served for the first month or so of school. But the logistics involved in distributing hot lunches does, do not get easier as the weeks go by. The same challenges that were presented on September 13th would still exist on October 13th. However, the more concerning issue is not the cold lunch. As Dr. Reiser indicated, it sounds like we will be moving to having that hot lunch option, and so I believe that issue will be addressed. The more concerning issue is the fact that the district failed to communicate effectively regarding the changes in the lunch schedules more generally. Every school sent a welcome back letter to parents, and every letter included a section about lunch. Yet none of these letters informed parents that there would be a limited lunch option and that there would be no hot lunch available. Furthermore, none of these letters informed parents that lunch and breakfast would be free for the entire school year. Had parents known that latter point, it might have saved them the hassle and cost of putting money into their child's lunch account only to not be able to use it for this school year. In looking at these letters, it occurs to me that within 10 words, we could have added 10 words to each of these letters to adequately explain to parents how the lunches would be different this year. 
And with that explanation, parents could have appropriately prepared their children. Moving forward, it sounds like we have an explanation for what happened. It doesn't excuse it. There still could have been better preparation, and we could have avoided the chaos that happened on Monday. We would like an explanation. Okay, I'm almost done. We would like an, exp an information as to when hot lunches would resume. I am certain that this lunch issue will be remembered as a minor hiccup in the overall very successful reopening of schools. I understand that a lot of logistics and consideration went into opening our schools safely, and I am very grateful to everyone involved who made that happen. However, the failure to provide clear and concise information to parents, that is an ongoing issue that we have encountered over and over again. So I am asking you, as the unwavering Ms. Brown did several weeks before me, to please, please do better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kish? As Dr. <clears throat> as Dr. Reiser pointed out earlier, uh, we know that communication has to get much better. Yes. And I believe going forward, you will see a, a major change in the communication. And I want to apologize for the clips that happened Monday. And they will be sending out information based on the hot lunches, so we'll be keeping you more informed. But uh, going forward, I think you'll see a, a change in the communication with the parents and the board. Yes, I had heard Dr. Reiser earlier, and I really appreciate that, and I can tell you many parents do. Thank you. So, thank you. That's it on this. Board comments, anyone? Yes. Yeah. You want to go? Go, go ahead. I'd just like to thank um, our administrators, teachers, custodial, secretarial staffs, security and central office for getting our schools ready for our children. Um, it's been a long road back, a difficult one at times, but I do appreciate all the work from all the parties involved to make this a successful opening as possible. I think the students and parents were very excited for the children to be back in school. Thank you. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to both uh, Mr. Vigiani and Ms. Candela. Um, both back to schools went very, very well. Parents were very excited. Um, you, both, you both did a great job. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Looking forward to the other two. Anyone else? Okay. I'd like to thank everybody for the work they did in opening up the schools, but I'd especially like to thank the uh, Sal Chaffee and his custodial staff. I toured the schools the day after the storm, and you would not believe the work that they put in to get our schools ready for opening day. There was a lot of water damage that was taken care of before the kids even opened up. So I'd like to congratulate them on a the job well done. Um, as Mr. Vigiani pointed out before, they're having a workshop for the FASA. Anybody who's never filled out a FAFSA before, I highly recommend that you attend that workshop. It is not an easy form to fill out. It's very confusing. So I would highly recommend that you attend that workshop. And one order of business from last month, the parent asked us about languages to, on the website. There is a translator button on the website. There's over 100 different languages that you can choose on the website to, to uh, appropriate your proper language. So I just wanted to clarify that. Other than that, I want to thank everybody for a great opening. Let's hope we have a great school year, no interruptions. And uh, with that, motion? Motion opposed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.